if, and the thing is wildly possible, the hunting of the snark is not nonsense, but a cunningly crafted code, what significant secret, for surely there would be one, might be revealed should the code be broken? A more recent author, Terry Pratchett, had this to say about so-called nonsense. People remember badly, but societies remember well. The swarm remembers, encoding the information to slip past the senses of the mind, passing it on from grandmother to grandchild in little bits of nonsense they won't bother to forget. Sometimes the truth keeps itself alive in devious ways, despite the best efforts of the official keepers of information. The truth keeps itself alive in devious ways. Many years ago, I worked out that nursery rhymes, those little bits of nonsense, were tools for learning the stars. Wrapped up in their apparent tomfoolery was a technique used by storytellers to craft stories from star pictures. It is from this ancient tradition that the hunting of the snark was born. And what about those official keepers of information, those who would kill off the truth if they could catch it? The hunting of the snark holds the key, and there is one particular sentence that can be used to unlock the code. It concerns the baker, an odd fellow, who would joke with hyenas returning their stare. Now this isn't something Carol could stumble on by accident. It shows an intimate knowledge of star pictures and the construction technique used by ancient storytellers. Let's see how it works. The stars might seem a daunting place to go finding pictures like hyenas, but fortunately in this case the hyena is based around a constellation that most people would recognise. It's the Plough, constellation Ursa Major. The Big Dipper is another name for it. It's a bit like a saucepan. We actually need to see it when it's upside down in the sky. To the left of the saucepan, you can find a faint curve of stars. It's faint but distinct. And actually at the top left, we've got a comet in this particular photo. That won't be there normally, but it sort of adds to this particular photo. And to the right is another very similar curve, but made of brighter stars. So we've got one faint curve, and one bright curve. The two stars in the middle point towards Polaris, the, the pole star the North Star. And from there there's a curve of stars angling back and that gives us a very fine nose. So here we have a face in the sky. Storytellers had to explain the difference in the eyes, one bright one and one faint one. And there's various options. Uh, glinting and grey of eye was this queen is one. And their eyes brightened and softened is another one. The one we're actually looking for is the winking eye. So the faint winking eye gives us he would joke and the bright staring eye gives us returning their stare. So he would joke with the hyenas returning their stare, which tells us that the hyena is made from both those eyes. And that's critical to uh, understanding how to find the hyena. Fortunately, we've got another extra clue because down here there's a star Edasic and that translates as hyena. Now these ancient star names give good clues as to what you can actually see in the stars. It's a little bit tricky because they're not always in the middle of the images they're supposed to represent. But the images can be so big the stars could be anywhere within that particular image. And this is at the hock of the hyena. There he is. You need to check out the uh, defining points of a hyena. And they have a sort of mane running down their back. Their eyes are very forward compared to the ears. The nose, as you can see there, has actually got added whiskers by that comet. Uh, that's a pure fluke in this case. But his jaw is wide open and he's, he's you know, a very active hyena about to attack or shying away from something but showing his fangs. His upraised leg is, is throwing up dust. That curve of stars that form the bottom of the nose can be seen as dust being thrown up. And his tail. Hyenas have a very distinctive tail. When they attack, their tail stands right up on end and it fans out. And the fanning out is in Coma Berenices, Berenices' hair. Now, Habiva might be uh, have as much to do with that as the hyena does. Uh, it's all related and um, quite intriguingly involved. So back to the face. This face is also the face of God, because if you read the New Testament, you can see that he winked at sinners and the like. This is part of the, well, it's the complete reason why truth was wrapped up in nonsense. God is just a star story, just like the hunting of the snark. It comes from the same source. 
The other real animal concerned in the pursuit of the snark was a beaver, itself a big star picture, based around the star Castor, the beaver, in Gemini. The bellman assures his crew that the beaver had often saved them from wreck, though none of the sailors knew how. The hunting of the snark is full of seeming nonsense, but if you know how to play with words and where to look, even this is easily explained, its origins deep in antiquity. The Warrior 5 website reveals more and links to the Star Strike app, which shows how to see the stars, including the snarking of the ship, in a new light. Download it for free and take part in the greatest game humanity has ever played. Happy hunting!